Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Groove Talk. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by our newest patron, I guess, Jeff Perry. Uh, Jeff Perry has just recently started donating to the show uh, through our Patreon page. Um, So thank you very much to Jeff. He plays in a really cool local band called Illyrian. They're a really cool local metal band and they have some CDs out. Uh, So yeah, go check out, go check out their page. And if you would like to be like Jeff and support this podcast, uh, visit our Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash frog E style. That's frog, the letter E underscore style. Um, there's multiple different tiers in which you can donate. There's a $1 tier, $3, $5 and $25. Each tier will get you a different reward. Obviously the more you donate, the better rewards you get. Uh, so thank you very much to everybody who does donate to the show on a monthly basis. It really means a lot to me and it definitely helps keep the show going. Also, when you do donate, you gain access to bonus content. I've released about five or six episodes just this month, in the month of September, of bonus content. Um, Those ones aren't Patreon exclusive, but I'm set to release some Patreon exclusive bonus content in October. Um, The content that is up there right now, you can also find on our YouTube channel, those are the only two places that you can find it is Patreon and YouTube. Uh, our YouTube channel is just Froggy Style Productions. Um, so if you would like access to some of that content, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, it helps a lot as well. Um, but if you are fans of the show, consider signing up for our monthly newsletter. Uh, you can do that at fsproductions.ca. It's the first thing you're going to see when you go to the website. You just sign up with your email and you'll get our monthly newsletter. The newsletter includes things like show release schedules, download links from previous month's guests, and you will be entered into a draw, a monthly draw, for a cool prize pack, which includes... CDs, t-shirts, toques, stickers, just a lot of cool, fun, free things. So yeah, check out fsproductions.ca and sign up for our monthly newsletter. On this episode of Groove Talk, I am joined by Graham McKenzie. Uh, Graham is the force behind the Major Minor Music Project. The Major Minor Music Project is a uh, project here in Calgary that is trying to provide more all-ages shows to the music scene. Um, And I think their end goal is to get a solid all-ages venue that they can throw shows at, basically. Um, They've thrown some really cool events like the Punk Rock Bowling, Punk Rock Axe Throwing, <clears throat> um, Christmas or Halloween in January. Uh, they also did the Silver Ball Rodeo, which was a cool like pinball tournament mixed with music show. So yeah, they throw really neat events, and they're all ages events. Um, so Graham stops by. He's been on the podcast before. He kind of tells us what he's been up to, how the project is coming along. And we really do delve into some really interesting topics as well, not necessarily about music, but about society and um, consensus hating is what we called it. So I highly recommend that you uh, listen to this podcast. It was a great conversation with Graham. Um, I'll have all the links in the episode notes uh, of ways that you can support the Major Minor Music Project or just find find him and maybe head out to one of the events that they throw. So, yeah. I hope you enjoy this conversation that I had with Graham McKenzie of the Major Minor Music Project. Enjoy. Enjoy. 
This is Groove Talk with Froggy Style. But I don't know, like, and I've read stuff, like, about, like, San Francisco. Like, the city there has moved into... Oh, I know what I was saying. No, I know, I'm back. Okay, now I got the flow. <laughs> is it, like, with... Like, they have a municipal election, right? Yeah. And, like, all these politicians and everything, and everything is, like, you know, like, come up with plans, and, and, and like, people are like, it's cha- time for change. Like, the same rhetoric and same, like, prevarication or whatever. And they, uh, like, thinking out of the box, thinking in new ways. But n- nothing, nothing, no one is forwarding anything out of the box. No. It's, like, it's nothing. It's business as usual. It's like. <laughs> every single one of them, every single person, like, on those platforms, watch the videos, every single person is not forwarding something out of the box. Because when you think of something like, why don't we buy a historical building? Something like Lloyd's Roller Dome is a historical building. It's been around for up- upwards of 40 years, and it's been an institution of, of gathering, people gathering, and families. And, and it's a sport uh, and a pastime. And the idea of saying, like, why doesn't the city purchase that? People would say, you're fucking crazy. Yeah. And so that is something that's out of the box, like using municipal money to purchase things like to to create like in, in perpetuity right yeah and like in and, and i read like in san francisco they like they've already started in buying just, just even shops and stores to try to keep like the integrity of neighborhoods yeah so like even diners i like i i believe that if a diner was there for like 60 years and like it's oh it's going to go under yeah but it's been like such an integral part of the personality of that neighborhood or that part of the city the city they've applied and there's a, like a grant system and and they they buy it and they keep it and then it's like the diner's ran by the city and it just it I don't know there's some there's something to that and I don't know you'd have people would have to do research and take a look at that but there's something to that and like Calgary there's an opportunity there with a thing like Lloyd's if it yeah. truly does go under in the next six months like the city should do something about that well yeah because like everybody knows Lloyd's in Calgary and like if you take the C train you like you know what I mean like yeah. <laughs> you can see it from the C train yeah like. <laughs> and like once something like once something like that is gone, yeah, it's gone. Yeah, because no one like Nobody's starting up a roller rink. Yeah, like, like in a roller yeah. rink because like the, to build a small arena like that because it's basically a small arena. Yeah, like it's like a flat track or flat pad or whatever they call it. Yeah. Like it's a big building. Yeah, like it's a fair sized building. Like and like to spot to spend that much money. On that to 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 make what seven dollars a person? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to have a lot of like like I don't know how you're gonna the business plan is gonna justify a roller rink. Yeah. Whereas if you have that, it's this a city. It's more of like a plan for building like connection and exercise and community yeah. and see it has value and it would be, it'd be a great place to hold shows like you could hold shows there bring in bands that are local and now instead of seven dollars a person you charge like fifteen dollars a person yeah and that yeah. like they see live music and they get to skate around like yeah and but i just think that people like in the city would be like we've got a lot of community centers yeah probably and be like why do we why would we need this this thing community center thing yeah. and like I don't know it just it just seems like an opportunity if that goes under that they will have lost something yeah you know I, yeah. I don't know um, but yeah so like it's just like getting venues getting people like excited to to do 
out of the think out of the box. I mean, that's the thing with the, what we're doing with the all ages is like, like doing out of the norm to kind of get people excited to kind of breathe some new life and bring a, a new thing to it. And it's always like yeah, a challenge is one of the challenges because people are like, oh, well, what what would that look like? And like convincing people that that it, just because it's never been done, yeah, it doesn't mean it's scary or a negative thing. That so, but yeah, it's a it's a tough thing because I I don't know I guess. It's not necessarily complaining about uh, about um, having to work. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it would be nice if you were just going. I got this idea. Go to a place and like, yes. I mean, that's, I mean uh, it wouldn't be a, what a wonderful world if you just go into private businesses and you're like. No, this is gonna be good, and people were yeah, like, like, "Oh, okay. fantastic! Yeah, I trust great. you, you stranger. <laughs> like, please take over my business for a night, and yeah. let's kind of see what happens." But it's I don't I don't think it's necessarily um, that big of an unknown. Like people can look in to see what we've done mm -hmm. for we've been going for almost two years now, coming up two years in January, and and they, there's like a trail of things that you can follow and see and we've like knock on wood not had any problems whatsoever at any show and generally people uh, have been quite successful and well attended and people are happy with it uh, with bands and people patrons and people just coming and, and it's just and we have and the all ages thing is really because we have you know from people from three to seven years old at the shows and, and we just we're just kind of even, we're just coming up two years, but we're really not even getting, I don't think, to where we're even beginning. Like, I think we're just, there's so much, there's so much more yeah. to do and so much more that you can do. Yeah, definitely. And and it's just, it would be nice if it was um, uh, a lot of places would be more, like, yeah, because we, we're trying to go in this kind of um, D kind of DIY, like also in like just out of the norm. We're trying to specifically to get people to pay attention and, and create awareness yeah. for all ages shows, and because to get people to see that it's needed. Like there's, it's not having space for it and like the city not providing spaces uh and the city might disagree and say oh we we have lots of spaces but uh then you get into where yeah when <clears throat> and how much yeah and if you look at all three of those factors how much do those factors like x out people and inclusion yeah and like if you really get to the heart of those factors and questions then uh, is there that many spaces available you know yeah it provided by the city I don't know but it does seem like more and more uh, like private locations are opening up their venues to at least like music nights or mm -hmm. like I've seen them at like climbing centers now and mm -hmm. um like there's like that trampoline place and stuff mm -hmm. and they do like music there sometimes and it's kind of cool to see at least yeah. that aspect of things but yeah. it doesn't seem like there's a lot of city city provided places to play at them. Yeah. yeah which is crazy because that seems like it's the city's d depending on private private businesses to provide the spaces more and like it's generally the director of the city to be helping with the culture mm -hmm. the cultural landscape of the city so yeah but um yeah no, it, it, it it's interesting so we're, we're working on stuff and we're like always like trying to get new new places and new ideas and I always like 
if anyone has an idea or knows of people in businesses, please please contact us. Please check out what we're doing. Please tell us. Give us give us a hand. And and uh, so if anyone knows, because uh, it, 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 what we're trying to do is just getting that, getting people on side and going and and finding that. And, and I went down um, and just like like way to build. We, um, I went down to Portland in the summer and cause I like, uh, reached out to the all ages in, uh, in Portland and they have a like really interesting program. They have a, a, a thing called PDX pop now that is very interesting that we're going to try to bring a similar thing here to Calgary. Uh, and it's an all ages free uh, festival okay. and they have a component on that that is um, uh, a CD too to promote uh, bands it's all the bands in the city and like the PDX Pop Now is a concert that is just all Portland bands and then the CD is like a representative slice of the bands and at, at that that year that are that are working yeah and no, and I went down and it was, like, it was a really cool, very interesting, super, the people who were running it were very nice people and very like, um, inviting in spirit and I met with them and so hopefully we can get something going there. And then there was another, uh, nonprofit in Portland called the Friends of Noise and they, it was interesting, they started in January 2016 which was the same time we started here yeah. and like Portland has like a really vibrant uh, music scene they have a lot of like internationally recognized acts that are centered there Yeah, and so I felt that Portland might have like different different kind of issues and and whatnot. but like talking to them the, the all ages non-profit and they had very very similar issues as Calgary, like like the govern municipal government, federal government, uh, like provincial or state government, has not adequately funded the arts, and like it was kind of funny because they were like, "You're from Canada, like you the arts get funded." Like there's a perception in in the states where like in Canada the arts are way more heavily funded yeah and they're like oh you you don't know anything about like how bad it is to get funding yeah and so it was a very similar story and they don't have a venue and in Portland same sort of thing is like Calgary like if a venue opens they don't get widespread support from arts granting or any level of government yeah. and they've gone under so they're in the exact same process that we're doing right now and so it's very interesting and I was like wow that's crazy how how similar the story is there um so yeah and so like the idea is like I was talking to them it was interesting that uh I, I started talking to them about why well, this idea of connecting all the all ages nonprofits in the Pacific Northwest area. Yeah. And like a lot of them are based on like the, what we're doing with major minor is based off this project called the Vera, the Vera project in Seattle. And that is, um, was started almost 20 years ago by, uh, Shannon Stewart. And she has wrote like a, a manifesto now called In Every Town. And that's kind of like what we're basing on, like the major minor on, how they, how they went about it and how, and there's, in, the, in the book, there's a lot of different ways because she examines uh, dozens of all ages uh, nonprofits throughout all of the United States and they each have regional, there's regional issues or just different scenes, different different things that come up yeah. and and so she studied them all and then she she started the, the Vera project and they've been very successful and that's and they have it's kind of a hub for like they have a recording uh, space an art gallery a performing space practice space graphic design labs uh, silk screening it's kind of like a one like stop a, yeah one stop shop for bands yeah like, <laughs> just to help people and, and yeah. it's just like a very vibrant thing and they're like concerts almost every night of the week and just 
he, just a lot of volunteers and it just seems like such a vibrant collaborative positive thing uh in the community yeah and so uh, they've re like portland has been based on that and i know there's one in reno nevada called the holland project and uh boise has one called the boise all ages movement um and so it's like an idea of mine and the friends of noise and the pdx pop now were kind of when i brought it up they kind of looked at each other and were like oh because this is something that we have been talking about yeah and so they had gone up and talked to vera and had a tour of vera and they said vera seemed very um uh open and and inviting so the goal is to get vera and get these all these together with us and try to build like a like a yearly festival slash conference of getting them all together yeah to share like ideas and, and for promotion funding helping bands programs how to go about all of these things and just having yeah. that and also then have something that will also promote each music scene in the other cities yeah and so you'd have like a boise showcase a reno showcase uh, yeah that'd be, that'd be really cool it would be yeah. kind of like a like a conference slash music festival like yeah uh, but you have all the talent from like each individual city yeah and and, and then like the ultimate really cool ultimate thing would be that you have that infrastructure and everyone's sharing that so a band from calgary could uh book shows in all of those towns as a backbone to their a tour yeah and then they could then go from that try to book club shows so like they might have to get two shows in portland or or when they're touring around on the way back right you could tour down to california or whatever and then you tour back up yeah. and you do all ages back up and like and so all ages will always be included in the tour routing whereas most a lot of times when bands tour it's just like uh bar, bar shows, shows and nightclub yeah. shows where like you could if you have that infrastructure where they're like oh yeah you can this is boom 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 you have five extra all ages shows here yeah and uh whatnot so and there's like a venue in spokane that's a really interesting place that i went to and that's an all ages it's an all ages venue but it's kind of a bar slash all ages venue i don't know how they got around it's called the Bartlett. It's very interesting. If you ever go to Spokane, it's okay. It's I don't know how they got around licensing, but like it's it was a really 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 cool venue and space. Uh, but yeah, the kids were allowed to be in the bar, um, and it was a bar, but it was also a knowledge space. I don't I don't know how they got hmm. around that. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be wonderful to to figure that out. I guess but, different laws down in Spokane. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, no, yeah, so that is, and then I, so I've reached out to Reno, and Reno, yeah, it was uh, kind of funny, they were like, no, we're, we, we, we would definitely be on side uh, uh, to doing that, but they were like, but we live in Reno, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, if it was that just a case of being uh, far away, or what, what that was in reference to, and they were like, well, yeah, that's great, but we're in Reno, <laughs> but, uh, so... And they were like very like because their thing was they were based off of uh, the Vera thing. So yeah, and I'm just waiting to hear back from Vera. So hopefully that that's something that's kind of a big project for next year and kind of a a pet project that just to slowly move towards because that would be a massive thing and nothing like um, to my knowledge I can't find anything that there's anything in North America that has that. There's no like mega like all ages conference alliance collaboration to create yeah. a super kind of uh society of them to get together to help and share and do that yeah it's kind of like a south by southwest but for all ages all ages stuff, but, yeah. yeah so hopefully hopefully that that i'm gonna just keep working towards that and keep yeah. getting them on side and try try to share it with that the key is Vera. so hopefully like in the next couple weeks um, we'll be able to really connect with them and, and go from there but like Portland and Reno seem on side so I'm waiting to hear back from Boise as well and 
I'm sure, like, once you get something like that, uh, the goal is... I'm not sure with Vancouver. I can't find, like, a specific venue in Vancouver. But there has to be, like, an all-ages like, like, so, yeah, group some sort or of collective, group, yeah. something. And that's the thing. You can invite these things from different cities, like something in, like, Spokane. You can invite people from there to it. And that, I don't know, I think it might have a transformative effect that, like, the cities that don't necessarily have independent dedicated all ages spaces might move towards that if they see like a, a big thing like that and you can and there's a lot of artists that are very like all ages centric or all ages positive yeah like that choose like in like because like julian julian baker is somebody like who if they can always chooses to play an all ages venue and I know um, that Titus Andronicus is another band that has publicly said that they are. And this guy, Jeff Rosenstock, my shirt, I, I actually saw him in Portland. And he is a very DIY kind of guy who is trying to do that. And amazing, amazing uh, musician and artist. Uh, do you know Jeff Rose? No. Yeah, crazy, crazy good show. Yeah. And like, so there are artists and I think like if you establish something like that, you can get people to take a look and like people who've, who recognize the importance of all ages in establishing their own careers. Yeah, well, for sure. Because like, if you're not playing an all ages show, no matter what, like by default, you're already like excluding maybe a third of your fans, maybe a quarter, maybe a smaller amount, but you're excluding some number of your fans who just like now can't attend that show because of their age. So yeah. like, if you can play an all ages show, why wouldn't you? Because it's just going to guarantee that you're going to have more ticket sales. Like, yeah, looking at it from a business perspective, at least. But... Yeah, and and there's also something I always it is interesting about all ages shows too is that. Generally, all ages shows are not expensive. Yeah, like, like five to twenty dollars usually. Whereas, like, if you think like in some things, like you go down to like a hockey arena show or even at the university or something, like the ticket prices are getting quite expensive for things. And like, yeah. so they're all ages, and like a family could go see whoever at the university. Yeah, uh, but you're dealing with. Fifty, sixty dollars a ticket. If you have four people in your family, yeah, it's an that's expensive ex night out. <laughs> very expensive night out. Yeah, and, uh, and or in the hockey, like if in the hockey arena you go see like whoever, like I think Arcade Fire is coming, and like uh, that's a lot of money. Like I think I think tickets are going heading towards hundred dollars yeah. at the hockey arena for a lot of the shows there. Or like the last the last show I saw at the Saddle Dome was tool and that was like 75 bucks for like second balcony tickets yeah yeah <laughs> so like... it's just crazy, like second balcony is 75 yeah. and so yeah i just think like and like generally not just like young people but generally a lot of people don't have that money to just drop yeah like it's a lot to it's to quite a bit to, to, and then especially if you go with friends and or families go and yeah it's a it's crazy. So there's something with that. There's something very exclusive about that too. And I don't know. And recognizing that that is going on and having spaces that people can still access music. Because if people are, if don't have that, then music gets pushed, right? It gets pushed and not. And that, I don't know, maybe it's connected to like how music programs and arts programs generally are second class like how often do you i mean there are some schools that are making it a focus now but like generally in a lot of conversations that it's like always like math and science and then if something has to go it's usually the music program or arts programs it's yeah. like always what goes first in in that, in that I don't know. I think that's majorly problematic to education. Yeah, definitely. And, and the cultural landscape of, of the city, I think. I don't know. Well, yeah, well, I mean, because people just gravitate towards different things, you know what I mean? So if you're cutting out, like, the arts, you're just 
completely alienating and excluding basically a certain subset of kids, which mm -hmm. that's no good. That's not what school's supposed to do. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Like, it's not. Like, and it, it, it's, it's very frightening. Yeah. And, like, and, and I always, like, when I'm talking to people and telling people about uh, what we're trying to do, I always use a reference that, like, like sports, there's so much infrastructure for sports and yeah. a lot of money. Like and what and going back to the Lloyd's thing, where like having government step in to keep something, that seems like it's like up, like and it's not, but it's not a, a sport, yeah, ordained to be, uh, you know, credible yeah. by the government because like how much, I'd like to see the figures on like how much the government spends on hockey programs in Canada. Yeah. Probably a lot. Like, just generally, just all well, from youth, from, like, the very young age through to seniors hockey, because there's senior leagues and everything. Or even like, stuff like the NHL and, like, the new stadium thing that's going on. Like, even if they pay a certain amount of that money, it's still going to be hundreds of millions of dollars for that new arena. Yeah. If they're willing to pay any, like, do you know what I mean? So yeah. Like, and then you get, multiply that with, like, every sport. And I am, I'm all for sports. Yeah, so I have sure. nothing against sports, but, like, it just... But at the same time, then, like, why do schools have to scrounge for to buy a tuba? Yeah. You know? Like, it, it yeah. always seems like schools are scrounging for money. And, like, you see, like, I don't know when the Junos were here. I think you see, like, Juno artists, like, in a high school going, like, oh, we've given... $25,000 so this band can have new instruments and isn't that kind of sad that the Junos have to be come to town for a grant for a band to get yeah, new yeah, instruments yeah. like and that they're like trotting it out like it's like a really like wonderful thing and she, yeah of course it's a wonderful thing that the band gets new instruments but it's kind of isn't it kind of a sad thing that you have to have those special grants and special things for that it's just not a given that every couple years like you get new if your the equipment is old and not really yeah, new, like, stuff, new yeah. instruments and whatnot I, I don't know they've uh i heard this but they, they've started like renting out instruments at the public library yeah which, yeah which i heard about that that's interesting yeah. yeah yeah that's kind of a neat thing to do yeah and i don't know how that's going to play into like uh, with band programs, because then if you... <laughs> like, <laughs> and late fees, like, are there late fees for that stuff? Like, I don't know, I like Because late fees at the library are, st are still pretty... I, like, I have, like, a... Like, an ongoing... Uh, I'm basically a, a regular contributor to the library fund here, because of the late <laughs> fees. Like, every month, I just have to go and make a payment. I don't know, I just can't get... In, and the librarians remind you too that you can just renew stuff online, but I don't know. <laughs> it's like that curse of video stores that the video stores would just yeah you just can't bring back the the VHS tape. Yeah, you can't, and I just can't take back the books on time. I don't think three weeks is like quite long enough. I yeah, don't know. It depends <laughs> on the book, really. I guess like <laughs> so you're reading a novel. I don't know, man. Yeah. I guess I read novels slowly because. Uh, Three weeks just does not cut it. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, like, and sometimes if, if, if one person puts a, uh, a weight on it, like, you have to bring it back. You can't, yeah. you can renew, renew to a certain extent, but that you can't. And so it's like, <laughs> you get, like, two-thirds of the way through a book, and uh, then you have, sorry, to, you have to return it. And I'm like, well, no, I'll just keep it, and I'll finish, and then you're, like, fighting against yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to return the book, and you're like, now you have to read the book, and then you don't want to read the book because uh, it's, like, it's a forced thing now. Yeah, it's, like, now homework you have, now. Yeah, you, yeah, now yeah it's you have homework to. Now, <laughs> and, then, and then meanwhile, there's just, like, library, like, fines racking up. <laughs> and, like, and it's funny because librarians, like, I know that they're pretty... Um, lax about like if if they they are they're allowed to make judgment calls like if they're like oh yeah, like we 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 would like people to pay the late fees yeah but like if you make the judgment call someone's just like no I can't pay I can't pay like thirty dollar late fee like late fees yeah then they'll they'll just waive it yeah because they've like like I've been like sometimes been going like what 
And then the librarian will be like, oh, no, it's okay. And, I'll just, okay. and I'm like, no, yeah, I'll pay it. They're like, no, no, it's okay. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. okay. But, but um, so I know that they do that. But, uh, but it's funny in that when you do pay, they're like, oh, you have a $25 late fee at the library. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, I'm like, okay, okay. And they're like, okay, uh, thank you for your contribution. I'm like, I thought you said it was a late fee. It's not yeah. a contribution. <laughs> <laughs> like they, they call it a contribution. Like, thank you for your contribution. Yeah. We can now buy more books. So I, uh, I don't know. It's funny. Well, they're probably like so used to people like battling with them every time. Yeah. Like, yeah I imagine, I imagine <laughs> so. so if somebody just goes up and they're like, "Yeah, okay, I'll pay this." They're yeah. like, "Whoa, that was jeez." <laughs> yeah. Because I used to work at a video store. Like I used to work at Blockbuster. And, like, telling people that they had late fees on their account and they couldn't rent movies until they paid their late fees was, like, the worst, worst. thing ever. <laughs> people just, like, blew up? Like, some people, for sure. Like, oh. you know, you always get people who are, like, you know, that's fine, I'll just pay it. Like, honestly, like, 50 to 75% of the people were fine. They're not happy about it, obviously. You know, yeah. they're, like, but... At twenty five percent, they're like, "What? Like, I returned that on time." It's like, "Well, no, you didn't." Like, <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> did no? Did Blockbuster ever waive it if people were being like, "Real never"? No. Like, it well, was like a- sometimes I did as an empl- employee, like just being like, "Okay, I'll just like get rid of this because I just don't want to deal with you as like." <laughs> oh, really? But yes. the, the, the policy it's was just, yeah, you couldn't like, but like I don't know. Like, there, I was a reasonable person. If, you know, you came to me with, like, a whatever excuse, I'd be like, whatever, I don't care that much. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm like a 17-year-old kid working at Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Blockbuster. Yeah. And like, What's that? What, what is this Blockbuster you speak of? <laughs> yeah, because nowadays, like, they're not even going to know. Like, they're going to be like, you had to go to a place to get movies? What? Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those things people like just will just will be very perplexing. Just yeah. Like the idea of people like why would you go to a store to just to rent, rent a, a video? Yeah, a like, physical like, copy of a video. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny like, there's still places like that still try to do that. Yeah, like like and, random gas stations. Yeah, and random stuff. gas stations or like I don't I don't think there's one in in this city anymore. Oh, there's one like there's a, a gas station just around the corner that's called Video Max Gas. Video Max Gas? Yeah, I'm not sure if they still rent VA, like movies out, but they yeah. used to at least. And it's still called Video Max Gas, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's quite the business plan there anymore. No. <laughs> I mean, if something, if someone like Blockbuster can't do it, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But anyways, getting back, like, so yeah, we're working on, that. that's a big project. Um, in, in the new year hopefully we can get something like that and uh we're working on like different we're, we got the the punk rock bowling coming back uh for halloween on uh saturday november 4th and we'll be doing one uh for christmas too so there's two more of those the christmas one is saturday december 16th cool. it's gonna be that so there's gonna be two more of those and we're working on um we're gonna doing um another Hip hop, uh, pop up uh, in Blackbird. Dan, who runs Blackbird, is an awesome guy, uh, and so we're gonna continue on doing that regularly. Uh, so that's gonna be November third, um, and then we got this stuff next weekend. Is uh, working with CJSW uh, that we have the the culture days kind of at McHugh house okay so we have like pretty cool show we have saturday night we have a bunch of bands and and sunday afternoon a really diverse lineup uh of artists of all spectrum in in calgary so that's that's cool that's a uh, gonna be a lot of fun and that show is uh, i think is a really special show because it's kind of like really um to the point of what we're trying to get at and what we're working towards because we have like a lot of people represented from different cultures playing that don't usually play together uh, so we have like Vietnamese Canadian pop singers and dancers and uh, uh, like a sitar prodigy who lives here in Calgary but 
plays very much in his community yeah that doesn't really play much opportunity outside of that yeah with like these uh heavy metal teenage guys called anti-pattern they're they're unbelievable i i just didn't every time i see them it's just mind-boggling the the, the talent level in these teenage guys uh but and they're gonna be like alongside you know vietnamese pop singers and yeah, in Vietnamese <laughs> and, and uh, sitar player, and then and it's like heavy, metal. heavy like <laughs> thrash, intricate thrash metal, and some uh, cut, uh, another uh, country singer songwriter, a young a woman named Kate Stevens, who is crazy talented. Like she's winning unbelievable amounts of awards with the. She, I mean, she commits into like the. The Stampede uh, talent searches, and she was in the Ship and Anchor songwriting stuff in around town, and she's she's so talented. Uh, she'll be playing there, so it's just a very different. And the and rappers, we have a, a lot of talented guys. Uh, Zach Taylor is a young guy who he got a YYC Music Award. Uh, last year and he's doing great stuff and he's got a crew of guys uh, that are always working hard uh, so and all of it kind of all of it together and once and like new kind of indie noise rock bands and um, Mademoiselle uh, they're a great uh, two young women in that band they're making rock and roll and just it's just really good it's just kind of an interesting kind of mix and that's kind of like what we're trying to get people together and see different sounds and and honoring it all together yeah. and have people see kind of the breadth <coughs> the breadth of music here in Calgary and like break down that it doesn't like this kind of music doesn't have to be at this place and this yeah. alone and everyone together can well, it, it's it's going to be interesting i think it's going to be a lot of fun and see how it all plan, uh, plays out, and it's gonna be that the the crowd will be should be an interesting one to see that, <laughs> that all together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw um, talking about crowds. I saw the Diane word came oh. to town. <laughs> yeah. It was very very like because uh, I, I want to check out because the the bravado of the main guy who, who's always talking about how great he is. And I'm always yeah. interested in seeing that, like Kanye West <laughs> and Jay Z, to see like how great the show is. But the crowd was such I'm an sure interesting sure crowd. It was, really it was all over the map. It was yeah. like just a, a strange kind of mix of kind of who that band brought out because they're like rap, but there's rap and and like uh, just just a different, very interesting. Thing yeah. <laughs> going on <up> there <laughs> uh, with with draw, you don't see that. Like usually, crowds are fairly homogenous at yeah. shows. Like you look around, and you're like and like, and you're like, oh, okay, this is like this, this is, is a punk show, or this, this is, is a, a metal show, show. Or, a metal show <laughs> yeah. or like like Spoon was like, uh upper middle class white dudes <laughs> <laughs> like predominantly like yeah lots of people wearing suits after work i don't know like it was a weird and that was actually like the spoon show and the diane show were like back-to-back -back nights yeah and so to go from one to the, to the other. other to see like <laughs> such a homogenous crowd to seeing yeah. such a like mixed bag crowd it was like it was jarring to see like like just so many of the same kind of people in one show and then so yeah. many different people uh, I, don't know. I, 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 I don't know I, I pay attention to, to, to the crowd uh, yeah. it's interesting to but, I mean like even something like like Circle Wagons like that festival there like yeah. you go to something like that and the crowd is so like varied and mixed like it being an all ages thing, so there's a lot of kids, and there's also like a lot of people from like the electronic music scene or yeah. like the festival scene, and then there's also like you know people from a bunch of and just families, and it's really interesting to see things like that just kind of bring so many different people together. Yeah, yeah, that 
the um, I what I found interesting about that show was um, that band Too Many Zoos. Yeah. Like I, I really I thought they were great. Did you like them? Yeah, I like them. Like yeah, I thought it was neat, but like it gets kind of old after a while. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I thought it was interesting that that many people were grooving to like a band that only ha- basically was like a trumpet and a saxophone yeah and like a drum dude and then the drum dude but yeah. like it was just it was very interesting because that's not uh the norm for something like really cutting edge or fresh and that's yeah. sort of what it felt like people were really into it and like they were jamming they yeah. were jamming and people were digging it yeah and definitely it, it was you know they put on i thought they put on a really good show yeah i thought that was a really smart pick for that festival to pick that band yeah like i thought it was really cool and really interesting and i like the music yeah. but like it's just after a while it's like the same it's just a variation of the same low ends on the saxophone with the same screechy bits on the trumpet you know yeah. that are like it's cool but it gets old for sure <laughs> yeah, it, it's interesting it's interesting that like that band was like uh um <laughs> uh the subway guys right they were the, the subway yeah, phenomenon yeah. and like it felt like they were buskers. <laughs> yeah. But, like, it was interesting that, like, people, like, now with the YouTube and whatnot and, like, viral videos that, like, buskers can... Yeah. Like, busking can They can be, play shows like that. Yeah. Like, that like, was, like, a pretty be, big show. It was a big... It was a really big show, and I thought they did a really good job, and... But it, it was interesting that they have a draw. Yeah. And... and but it reminded me of, like, the band in the 90s, uh, Morphine. Because Morphine was a band that had just the, the baritone sax as well. And, ba- well, they had bass, baritone sax, and drum. And yeah. it was a totally different sound. Like, that was more of... Uh, too many zoos I felt, felt was, like, more of, like, um, uh, going for dance music. Yeah. Because right? like, it had, like, like, the beats. And, like, it felt like they were going for, like, that... Yeah. Like, like being, like, that current sound like keeping current whereas morphine was more of like a throwback to be like jazz swing like uh, kind of throwback sound like the yeah. boozy nightclub type but the the making the baritone sax the integral instrument just echoed that for some reason in a different way yeah it would be i would have i would have dropped my jaw if like they had covered morphine <laughs> that's what I was waiting for. I was like, "Come on, just do just it, just do it." Cover morphine, like cover morphine, do a morphine song. Yeah. And like the thing is, I don't think anyone would have really, like, uh, like known would have not too many people would have been like, "Oh man, they're covering morphine right now." Like, but like, I think it would have made it a little more dynamic. But no, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, definitely an interesting setup for sure. An interesting kind of little one day festival there yeah yeah and so and going back to what we're working on and again we're gonna do we're gonna do halloween in january again so that we're gonna try to make that into and we're gonna do the family day axe throwing as well because we're trying to set up like and when we're trying to get new spaces we're always trying to build like uh relationships yeah and like help businesses that's like the main thing is too as a major swing to like having a good relation, good collaboration, then it's not just about, I mean, it's about creating more access music and, and, and doing that and creating more shows and for yeah. families and, and youth, but, uh, but also like helping businesses, yeah, like local, local businesses. You're helping local, local businesses, like, then like interesting local businesses too, you know what I mean? Yeah. And also creating like some people don't like when we did the pinball show, like there was the amount of people that when we were promoting that, that were like, but I had no idea Calgary had a pinball league. Yeah. Just that was, we got that more often than anything else when we were like, oh, we're doing this pinball show and we're trying to get the most amount of pinball machines in one place and people were, and we're working with the Calgary Pinball League and the pinball enthusiasts and people were like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> like we had, like people were like, we have that in Calgary? Yeah. And so there's an aspect in like, they 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 were super awesome the Calgary pinball guys and like I'm I really enjoyed meeting them all and and uh, they did such a wonderful job with the event and cuz the machines are pretty finickety and they had guys were fixing the machines all day long both days and it it 
but they mentioned like it their their amount of uh people who were joining and liking their page and like yeah. asking questions j jumped incredibly just to, like had a much more uh bigger a wider audience and that's great that's exactly what we're what we're trying to do we're yeah. trying to get people to see that there's a lot to celebrate here and the, and the, to, to offer offer more yeah so yeah and like i guess doing like you said you were trying to like do it on like the same days or the same weekends as well like family day axe throwing like yeah if, you yeah, know, yeah if that like becomes a thing you know that's like yeah hopefully. <laughs> that's what, that's the goal that's the goal we're trying to do like, we go and have, like family yeah. day axe throwing yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring the whole family you know, yeah. let's, uh, some punk rock and or rock and roll and let's go throw some axes or, yeah. yeah and then just creating a thing doing that i don't know let's see and like and hopefully we're going to be uh, hopefully uh, announcing uh, some new stuff uh, and new venues that we're going to be working with shortly. Cool. Um, working on a, a bunch of stuff that we can, and hopefully people will think it's strange and, and offbeat, hopefully. That's the goal. <laughs> and it, people are like, how is that going to work? And then we'll see if we can get it to work. <laughs> It's like half the appeal though like yeah. people want to come to these things it's like how, like what is this going to be like what is punk rock and axe throwing going to be like or yeah. what is the like whole day dedicated to pinball and music going to be like you know yeah like, it, it was a lot of fun it was the the pinball was great uh yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we can hopefully and we're going to try to do that uh annually too so there is a in it uh, there is going to be in like doing that and promoting that we found out there's they're gonna start uh there's gonna be a pinball brewery soon a pinball brewery in inglewood <laughs> okay <laughs> I, I think they're very close to doing that and yeah. like pinball arcade brewery right on what they call the music mile which is that has blues can and ironwood okay uh along there yeah. and it's becoming like a brewing uh area too because they have cold garden and Highline Brewing okay. right in there. And so that'll be a third brewery in like a couple blocks. Yeah. And they have quite a few. It's a really nice. Inglewood has got a lot of different things going on. And, and I heard that's going to be like another brewery there. And with a arcade pinball with a, a bunch of pinball machines. And like some crazy machine. I forget some interactive like 10 person crazy thing gonna be there. <laughs> so hopefully that comes out and then we can do shows there that's yeah. the goal like hopefully that that like i might call it brewcade or something something like that uh, yeah. but it's gonna be fun so people should look for that in inglewood coming up next year hopefully and then in there so we're gonna see if we can do stuff there and yeah and we're trying to set up some regular Try to set up some regular like residencies in different places. Yeah. In 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 the city. So hopefully we can get those, and we'll be releasing those when those come out too. So I don't want to really divulge too much because it'll jinx it like Lloyd's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I started telling people like, oh yeah, we're gonna try to like the bowling, the bowling or axe throwing. We're gonna start having the regular with Lloyd's. And um, then it just completely fell through with them. Uh, <laughs> they didn't want to do it. But but the thing is, if they do go under, that they'll probably sell all that gear. Yeah. And so we might try to do uh, next year. We're not uh, losing track of that. We might like because Nerdskate. We we have a good relationship with Nerdskate, and it's also in Inglewood. Is a really awesome business, and if people are interested in roller skating and stuff, to check that place out. Um, super nice people who wrote it um and they do because we started the 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 roller derby during sled island sled island were super nice to include us in their in their programming and we had did the all ages roller derby which was also a fantastic and a lot of fun as well and with, through that we did that in collaboration with nerd skate and uh, sled island and so I was talking to them, and it, it would be wonderful if that something happens there that we can do a DIY kind of get that, yeah, 
get that all the hardware and do it and find other spaces where they have dry pads to do it. And they were mentioning that there's places, some community com- community associations are refinishing their <coughs> like hockey rink surfaces. So that stuff will be okay. like dry pads in the summers. So it's yeah. something, so that's just something that like that same thing. We're not, I generally don't let go of anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so I always want to keep it in front of me that if we have an idea and we want to do something, we'll keep keep trying keep trying to do it. Yeah. Because I don't know, it's getting people together and and like just to just keep going and and maybe it's maybe it's just timing, right? Maybe it's just not right time and maybe something it falls in place. So yeah, you know, and just working. Hopefully, we're working on some bigger stuff that. Uh, Oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to jinx it. Uh, you, yeah, I, I start saying that, and then I'll, I'll be on record. And then I'll, I'll, be like, I'll come talk to you in a, in a year, and I'll be like, yeah, that didn't man, I was... <laughs> <laughs> Someone, yeah. uh, In the negotiation, then someone was like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> then I'll be like, no, no. I mean, then we just have to keep on them. But... <laughs> yeah. That's not to reveal too much information. I've like even fallen into that trap being like, yeah, no, totally. This thing's going to come out next month or whatever. And yeah. it's just like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. damn it. I said yeah. it. Because <laughs> there's, there's just a certain imbalance in that you don't, there's, look, like I said earlier, there's just some situation you don't have too much power over. That, yeah. That if, if people just decide that they don't want to have the, the extra stress or the extra responsibility of that, then it doesn't doesn't happen. So, but yeah, we're, we're like hopefully. I mean, we're just working on. We're like we we're kind of like I'm always working on like ten over ten different kind of things and like slowly moving them forward. And hopefully, when one when this one happens, then we do it. Oh, uh, and one thing I, I we do have is another. We have the axe throwing coming up. Um, in in February. But we have one coming up before Halloween, another thing, and it's a kind of a special thing. Also, it's like like the, the this one coming up with CJSW this coming weekend is kind of a really special thing with that because it's like what we're really trying to do with building and breaking the barriers and building up the community. That um, we're doing one with all the female uh, MLAs. In Calgary, okay. At the axe throwing, and there's going to be it's all ages, but they have drinks at the axe throwing, and they have we're going to have live music, a lot of good bands, and all the female because there's a big thing like going on in in the world, but even also in Alberta, but there's like a lot of violence against women in public service, yeah. and people there's a lot of double standard with that it's okay to be really atrocious and violent to women online uh and especially in um and in public forums just like when uh, like a female politician is talking there i mean in arizona that they had the politician get shot in the head and they almost she didn't die luckily but that in the uk they had a female politician gunned down as well and these are women getting gunned down yeah. and for being female politicians uh and in the same sort of rhetoric we're like here like um our premier and even our past female premier like Alison Redford and now Rachel Notley female politicians uh and our premiers have had to deal with uh way more death threats violence and if you look at even the opposition leader made tossed off jokes about beating women and beating the premier. Like, it's a very unacceptable, very, very, very unacceptable. And that, that this this discourse is is prevalent. It's prevalent. So we're trying to do a show to raise awareness to this and saying that this is not acceptable. This is not a way forward. Like, equality uh, should be a given. Yeah. Especially at this point, I feel like. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's sad. To, like and it's the same thing with like, like systemic racism. Yeah. It's like people are like it's like people mentioned. Oh, it's 2017, and we're still dealing with this. 
Well, I think it's largely because we didn't, it wasn't dealt it with. It wasn't fully dealt with. <laughs> like, there's, still, there's still societal things <laughs> that, you know, leak into your subconscious and stuff, and that's what it is, right? So you may not, th- may not think that you're racist or have any biases, but there's those, like, societal biases that exist without even your knowledge, you know what I mean? Yeah. That you're just not even aware of sometimes, but... Yeah, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, and so we're doing this to help support the female politicians in Calgary yeah. to raise them up, raise funds, all the funds from the night go to help them uh, in their future campaigns and to say like there has to be a, an elevated amount of respect and equality for women who choose public service and that it's not acceptable to be openly violent and hostile to women in a public forum or on social media or anything. It's just like nowhere is it uh, even remotely uh, acceptable yeah. to to have death threats. And then because it's creating, it creates an environment where someone uh, loses it and decides to shoot, shoot them and what happened in Arizona yeah. and... and in the United Kingdom, like, and it's you create creating these atmospheres and incubating this thing that like people are saying it's okay, and then it happens more and then more, and it escalates and escalates and escalates, and we're hoping to bring awareness to to de-escalate it to be like, come on, it's like, and it's sad. It is sad. It is sad that we have to be like, hey, so don't say violent, <laughs> don't say violent stuff about women. <laughs> Who are in public service, <laughs> but like the amount of of you just go online and uh, well look, the president of the United States is is uh, yeah. uh, gung ho to to up the rhetoric of uh, for violence against women, you know, and yeah. inequality and like institutionalizing that inequality, and it's just it's just wildly inappropriate and, and beyond even saying wildly inappropriate is not uh, really enough to encapsulate how bad you know yeah so i don't know so that's what we're we're doing that and hopefully we can get a lot of people out and raise some money for and 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 have people come and and meet them and and come and see these are strong women and working hard and trying to change the face of how politics and things are done in Alberta and in Calgary. Oh, yeah. And like people need to give uh, these women credit that that it is extremely stressful and it is different. Like th- saying that you're uh, a woman in a, in a public role compared to a man is the way we are and that's what we're trying to be and 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 talk about this and bring this out is that women have to put up with way more uh aggression way more like double standards and all of that than men and it just it it needs to i mean like and that and you can get into stuff like the the pay and everything, but the politicians is not an issue there with the government, but, <laughs> but, uh, it's just opening up that conversation yeah. to say like, come on, like, why is it so acceptable to, to these people who sit down and don't know, don't know these people don't say this stuff about people. They don't know. They don't understand the role. They don't understand the job. Yeah. And they're not, they're not like willing or uh, that even passionate about it to find out the information required to make that assessment. Yeah. They just are reacting in an ignorant way, uh, spouting something from an emotional place that with no actual evidence and in a very hurtful uh, uninformed, uh, uneducated way. And they're also doing it semi-anonymously over the internet, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that person may not ever say something like, 
what they say on the internet face to face with that person. Oh, of course, of you course, know? yeah. Because there's like real life recourses that could happen if you have a face to face conversation where you're telling the other person how much you hate them. But yeah. on the internet, you're like completely anonymous, you know. So people are more likely to lash out and stuff like that, and like really bad lashing out, yeah. like just viciously lashing out yeah. to people, like. Like no one, no one deserves the the level of vicious lashing out that a lot of women in public service are dealing with. Yeah. Like, and, and personal attacks, not attacks on policy or work, just personal attacks. Yeah. And it's just, it it needs to end. It needs to end, and people need to talk about that. I I think it needs to be brought really heavily to the surface. Yeah. But it's like it's like so it's only like uh, in the internet that. It's like people are hating by consensus. Yeah. Like, it's not even like, I don't even think most people doing this, like, armchair hating uh, on the internet are even, the, the hate is, is even sadder that the hate is not even authentic. Yeah, exactly. They might not actually, it might just be in a re reaction at this point. It might not be an actual... Yeah, like, they see a whole bunch of hate and they just jump on on the hate train, yeah. like... Because, like, I'm sure if you met that person in actual life, they wouldn't be this super negative person. Like, some of them might be, for sure. But yeah. But I'm like, not, like, not all of them are. They're not going to be these super negative people yeah. who would just, like, react like that in real life. But on the internet, they have this persona, and that's what it is. So. Yeah, wouldn't it be great, like, and, and also really scary? And I think there's, like, a book that, it like, is kind of, like, uh, I haven't read it. It's always it's on my list. It's called, like super sexy sad love story <laughs> and it's kind of like about in the future the uh <laughs> like people can see the stuff you're posting and see everything about your profile like just it pops up like oh, in yeah. augmented reality yeah. and i think it'd be interesting if like society got to the point where like if someone was posting like really violent things against women yeah and then they go to work the next day and like it's it would pop up. up it would pop up like it's... this is what he's uh, i was saying about this and people could just see all this heinous shit that people yeah. were saying about other people on the internet i think it would really maybe it would just keep, I... it would keep people in check you know what i mean yeah. like it would, cause it would make people accountable <laughs> again for what they're saying like we have been we've been accountable for what we've said for thousands and thousands of years until the internet came along and now we're like that accountability is just like no longer even a thing yeah it's like and it's, it's even scary because if you think about like if you minus you minus the accountability and then people are like where people go is like to heinous dark places like just really yeah. hateful just really negative violent abhorrent behavior wouldn't, yeah. it be, wouldn't it have been nice to know that, like, if you remove, remove, uh, <laughs> like, like, accountability, that everyone went to, like, ultra positive way? Yeah, like a super nice way. Super nice. Of just, like, like, everyone negative. on the internet was like, <laughs> hey, I disagree with you, but I still think that you treat your family well and you're a lovely person and you put in hard work and, like, yeah. like you never see. Like you, you never do, see like you do sometimes, but like definitely there's a tendency towards yeah. the hateful yeah. side. <laughs> that would be like that could be like a a master's work, like a some post grad where you like just tabulate the sheer amount of negativity, like opposed to positivity, and then do it over different subject matter. Yeah. So you've like women in politics and have like what the percentage on and then men or like sports like how much negativity to positivity <laughs> ratio and then you can find out like where people where the most negative comments come from and, yeah. and like where the most positive aspects are coming from i don't know it'd be interesting to see Definitely. i guarantee someone is probably. studying it's like everything you think of someone is already doing probably yeah. like but uh so we just have to wait for that research to come out <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then when it comes out, someone will someone will put really negative heinous shit on the oh, yeah. on the oh, taglines. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Why did you do your research? Come yeah, on, yeah. <laughs> like, this article was shit. Yeah. <laughs> People like violently uh, hating on the researchers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw a thing. 
a really thing that actually made me laugh out loud was like someone innocently posted a bit from a Conan O'Brien show. And it was a comedian. I forget the comedian's name, but his whole bit was about Guy Fieri. And it's, and he was making a point like everyone hates Guy Fieri. Yeah. Just like hates his persona, just hates everything about him. It's just he's like all, he's like viciously attacked on social media and public forum. And the comedian was positing like, what did Guy Fieri really do yeah. to deserve such hatred? <laughs> <laughs> like, how many people actually know Guy Fieri to be able to make that call to yeah. to, to really to just, just, hate just on despise? Like, like how yeah. can you how do you, how do you really despise Guy Fieri when you don't, don't even know him? As a don't person. you don't know him? <laughs> yeah. You can only base it on like some like tacky clothes he wears and his hair and some restaurants or his TV show. Like, and, like, and you really have, like, you need to, like, be constantly posting on the internet how, how horrible it is. How much you and, hate guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, how, how much, how little, how little do you have to do that you have to be posting about Guy Fieri? But then it was, like, that was just a bit. And someone just innocently posted, like, thought it was funny and thought he was making, like, any, I, I think the comedian made a good point yeah. about it. And then there was just, like, a <laughs> uh, shitstorm of people like completely missing the whole point and just violently attacking <laughs> yeah. the guy who posted the comedian bit, violently attacking the comedian <laughs> who is on the bit. And it was just like, and the, com- the comedian like pivoted to also to Nickelback that everyone yeah. is like, and it's hating by consensus. Like, how can people, how can Nickelback be one of the most hated bands ever, but they're also like one of the biggest bands in the world. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they it, sell out stadiums, but everybody hates them somehow. Yeah, it's just like, this like consensus hating. Like, yeah. it's like that people, everyone's hating it. So that's, we all have to say we hate it. And the comedian was making a point of yeah. like how uh, shallow and on all of this is. And like people just, went over everyone's head and everyone just was like consensus hating the guy that posted it consensus hating the comedian consensus and then and then like connecting like and then for some reason then like bringing up bringing up like other comedians like bill hicks and how bill hicks would hate them like so then not only going on how like they themselves hate Hate guy fieri and this comedian then speaking for other people who are deceased that would also hate that and then then extrapolating even further about how they hate dennis leary because dennis leary rips off bill hicks or something so consensus hating dennis leary and then, oh, and then uh, then going down to pivoting to consensus hating. It was just like just constantly people consensus hating and missing ex- what it is. And then it got to the very final comment and it was like uh, someone was like, well, seriously, though, I hated Nickelback before it was cool to hate Nickelback. <laughs> and I thought that was like the most ridiculous the most ridiculous thing, one of the most ridiculous things I've hated, that someone felt compelled to say that they were better at hating, at hating Nickelback <laughs> than all the consensus haters of Nickelback. <laughs> and then they had an asterisk that said, uh, seriously though, I hate Nickelback. I genuinely hate Nick. I genuinely hate Nickelback. <laughs> like, and I, I just had, I, I just thought that that was like, oh my, that's where we are. That's where we are. Like, felt they really felt they needed to to tell people that they were, and they were sure. Like, where I want to know where where is the line? Like, like this is someone keeping track? Like, I started hating Nickelback. In 19, 1998. And someone's like, well, that was late for hating Nickelback. Yeah. I started hating Nickelback in 1996. So if you started hating Nickelback in 2008, you're late to the hating Nickelback party. And you're just a wannabe Nickelback hater. Yeah. And like, we have no 
place for any <laughs> wannabe Nickelback hater in the Nickelback hating group. Like, if you hate Nickelback, you have to, not only do you have to hate Nickelback, you have to hate Nickelback longer and earlier <laughs> to really hate Nickelback. If you just started hating Nickelback, like, in 2016, well, you're just a poser at hating Nickelback. <laughs> and you have no, you have no place in hating Nickelback, and you shouldn't be posting about hating about Nickelback. Because there's people who've been posting about hating Nickelback since 1996, and they're so much better than the people hating Nickelback in 2016. <laughs> you know? Or even 2017. <laughs> you have to start hating early. Yeah, well, it's like because if you, you it's know, the same as like it's like the opposite of the I listened to that band before it was cool. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I hated that band before it was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hate early, man. You gotta get in on the hate. You gotta start hating, and so like it's like you gotta get a head start, like before a band starts getting unpopular, before they peak. You just have to start hating them. Yeah. So then you can post later on that you. Start Started hating them early. You heard it. You, yeah, yeah, you were hating yeah. them first. <laughs> so you know, I, I'm going to just start posting about how much I hate bands, famous bands, just so I can be first to hating. Can so reference. I can <laughs> shit on everyone else who started hating that band earlier on. So I, I it's, it's my goal to be to to be the first. To hate bands, just hate hate by default. I hate I by think default. So yeah. I want to be ahead, ahead, ahead of the the consensus hating, because you don't want to be behind the consensus no. hating. You don't want to be unoriginal with your hate. No, you don't want to be unoriginal with your hate. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the original hater. Yeah. You want to be the instigator. Yeah. You apparently it's cooler to instigate hate. Yeah. So, yeah. You got to hate on things. You know. You really got to hate on things, and you got to hate on things early. Yeah. So that's the key, right? Key. You don't. It's not about loving and positivity. No, gotta be, it's all it's, about the hate. It's all about who you hate first. <laughs> and it's like, if you did love it, it's, you got to jump off that to be, if, if, you, if people are jumping off, it's who jumps off first, right? Yeah. So that's what's important. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like weird though, because like I do tend my, I like tend to find myself, uh, I guess identifying with negative feelings towards new music almost by default before like like something new will happen and I'm like oh I hate that and then you know I give it a couple of years and I'm like I oh that's actually really cool and I really yeah. like that like but like by default almost though like change and something different is like no hate like yeah. it's I don't weird. know why why it's such a it's such like a people like define def like find it so much easier to define themselves by what they hate yeah than what they love i don't know why i don't know why people like to draw that and like it's why why, why is it so much easier to to define yourself by that i don't know and like yeah. it's so it's so prevalent and to that like it's almost like a knee jerk reaction to like talk about things you hate more than talk about things that you love yeah you it's know? almost yeah default in society to talk about how your day sucked or like what's yeah like the, sh the shittiness of traffic or like what bad all the bad stuff that happened yeah. to you but never like yeah no i'm actually having a really great day <laughs> yeah like I, there's a great thing that we should start like talking about the gr we should start, <laughs> start, start start no one would listen to it. you you start a uh, 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 podcast about how great traffic is <laughs> <laughs> You know, traffic wasn't that bad today. Yeah, yeah. How, I, uh... was your, how was the traffic jam for you? Oh, it was fantastic. What did you do during the traffic jam? Oh, this is what I did or I was thinking about during the traffic jam. A, you call it pos the positive traffic jam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like, I, I read, like, like some... Uh, like, I don't know if it was really a peer reviewed journal or not <laughs> that it, it, I think it was like a, someone shared science. So like on the internet, you have to like do research to find out if the research on the internet is actually real uh, research yeah, yeah, or yeah. if it's just some guy going, this is research. This is facts. It's facts. <laughs> I'm going to put these out there and call them facts and see if people actually, but there was an article <clears throat> and I think it was from something psychology today so maybe they did some back checking yeah. <laughs> but it, it was saying that like if you if you are negative a lot like if you continually are negative that 
it has a way of rewriting your brain chemistry. So it's a more and, negative kind of And then everything is seen in more negative and it's just like a self-fulfilling prophecy that you respond to things in a more negative way and it's yeah. easier to respond and that's how and then you define yourself in a negative way and it keeps spiraling out like that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it, it kind of seems obvious that that is. And so like there, I mean, and then it gets into like kind of a new agey thing that, that like it's crazy. The fact that they might actually be fine doing research and finding out like just like uh, the, the Monty Python to always stay on the, the bright side. Of, like, <laughs> like the, the, that if you actually, if you actually do look on the bright, bright side, side, it's, it's, a better, it, thing it's better for you out. to mentally, yeah. <laughs> it's mentally to like even frame things uh, negatively in, in a positive way or look, try to find yeah. positives in things that like, it's like a cliche thing to try to find the silver lining or positive, but they're actually yeah. maybe finding research that that is actually will like physiologically like benefit you know like why are you towards happiness yeah why are you towards like of course there's nothing there's no quick fix but like that there's actually there there might there's doing studies to more likely to have like pathways predisposed to happiness or more predisposed to like look at it and be like oh well, like that bad thing happened, but like at least I'm alive, or at least this. Yeah, or, like, or something. Like, and if you like, and it's the same thing. I guess it spirals out in the same way. Like if you continuously, continuously talk about positive things happening, then more positive things, or you will see it in a more positive way, and then yeah. it kind of will go spiral up. That you become happier and you become more gracious and grateful, and then yeah. more have like, like which will yeah. it also spiral outwards as well. Like yeah, the people around you will also yeah, become more happy and more because, yeah, because you're it, just like interacting with them. And like, how many times has like a negative human interaction been like, oh man, that changed the entire course of my day? Or how like yeah. same thing for a positive yeah. human interaction? Yeah, because so. then you start wanting to consensus hate. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like how 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 difficult is it to, to like to really continue on a conversation if someone is just like shitting on something yeah. really hardcore <laughs> like just hardcore shitting on something and yeah and then you're just like well uh, there's this like this really awesome thing happened to me it's kind of a it's kind of feels like a weird transition yeah, it's gonna be an uncomfortable transition. it's an uncomfortable transition to go from someone like oh I hate this band and be like I uh, you know I, I actually really like I that. actually really like this band it's like. People generally feel uncomfortable with that juxtaposition. Like if, like, yeah. especially if like you were in a group and everyone in the group was like shitting on something, yeah. and, and you're like, actually, there's nothing really wrong with it. Like I, I am enjoying myself. Yeah. And, and, like, and then four other people were like, this is the worst shit ever. And, yeah. and you're like, wow, actually, you know, I, yeah, I'm fine. I, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. And most people would just then don't don't bring that up right yeah, yeah, and then they don't bring it up or they like consensus hate. exactly yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you run, get yeah. sucked into you get sucked into that negative thing when not necessarily those are your feelings yeah and then you're getting manipulated by like outward hate i, I it's guess like society it's like <laughs> trying to belong to this like tribal group type thing <laughs> yeah yeah no so i don't know it's interesting yeah <laughs> but i mean it's even proven or i don't know if it's proven but at least they say uh, that just smiling, like forcing yourself to smile, will actually <laughs> change your mental state to a more positive one. Yeah, yeah, and Which I believe is, it. Yeah. I, I know, I believe it. Like, uh, there, there's something, there's something to that. Uh, definitely, I, 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 I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, cause like, and there, and there was like, like weird new agey stuff, but like, even like, like laughing like forcing yourself laughing will start you to laughing or like like with the like chemicals in your in your brain to do that yeah like um because your brain doesn't know it's just like oh we're laughing this is what we do when we laugh and it releases all these good feeling yeah. chemicals right yeah. like so <laughs> yeah so no so anyways that was a long long <laughs> way around for the the axe run so yeah that's on thursday <laughs> Thursday, October 26th, and we're going to call it Axe the Inequality at uh, Battle. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, Dan there runs Battle, and he's a, a fantastic human being and very supportive of what we're doing and, and, and believes in like the axing the inequality as well. And a lot of fun axe throwing. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And uh, please come out. Uh, like come, You should come. You should come check it out, man. Yeah. Like, uh, 
uh, but yeah, and it's for a good thing. And like, and that's and that's sort of like to what we're trying to do at the same time. With we don't just our goal is to have an independent um, all ages venue, but to build in. And that's the thing. Going back to Shannon Stewart, who started the Vera project, um, that different different all ages things have these also objectives of with social change and embedding that into saying hey this is we're better off if we're going in these directions and and creating the awareness and creating the conversation and doing that and like and that's something we want to do and 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 breaking down barriers and getting into doing different different events too not just uh music based events too and just do doing things to get people uh, together uh to get out of the uh the the consensus hating like just get the people away from that and move into more positive circles and to see people more and have that more accountability to see because i think if people are interacting that they're going to be less likely to do that like, yeah, come out it's like people who who have a negative thing, a feeling towards it? Why, why don't you come out and meet all the female? And they're all going to be there. There's eight female MLAs in Calgary, and they're all going to be there. And come out and meet them, and actually talk to them, and see what the job is like, see what they're working, and the work they're doing. And I, I, th- I it's very. I think it'd be very hard to come away from meeting them and talking to these women and not. Uh, feel that they're they're trying to do good work and yeah. trying to do the best for for people and you can disagree but with their whatever their politics or whatever but you can't disagree with people trying to improve the the status of women and equality and moving society forward to be a more positive loving place yeah so and like even if, especially if you disagree with maybe what like the political views of the women or whatever, it's better to meet them in an actual open situation and have a discussion like that because then you may at least you can make your disagreements known and they may even change your mind if you're meeting yeah. them in real wi- life because discussions work better in real life. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> and some people are like don't I don't. I don't want my I don't want my mind changed. I yeah. want to stay in my hate shadow. Yeah. <laughs> it's comfortable here. <laughs> stay in my hate shadow. It's familiar. Yeah, because yeah. the people like yeah, I think there's people out there that like feel that if they have new information or there's like they are educated and and have a further wider perspective that then losing this like their their way of going about it or their idea of it somehow changes their personality or changes how they operate in the yeah. world when when that's just like so what you're doing is you're battering down your ignorance yeah basically like, like you're doubling down on the ignorance of the situation which is crazy because that means the education system has seriously failed people because that getting into like the education is the education system like equipping people to have a fixed mindset whereas where hate racism uh, sexism, all of that comes from a, six, uh, a fixed mindset, or is it coming from a broader, open mindset? Yeah. And like, are our schools developing people with a fixed mindset or open, broad mindset? And and I, I, I don't. It's sad. I think I think the actual state of it is is there's a lot of people coming out with very fixed yeah. mindsets. It definitely depends on <coughs> like. The teachers, you know, yeah. like the way that the teachers are approaching the educational system, because I definitely know some newer teachers who are like just getting into teaching who, you know, um, they are approaching it with like a broader mindset and trying to yeah. teach teach kids like how to learn and not just what to learn. Yeah. Which is at least when I was going to school, it was all like, you know. This is how copy you this, learn. Copy yes. the sheet. <laughs> copy the sheet. Regurgitation is key. Yeah. <laughs> copy the sheet, and if you don't copy the sheet, like very neat, you you're you're not you're gonna fail and be a loser your whole life. Yeah, if exactly. You don't copy this down. Yeah. Yeah, and that what's really scary is like like when topics come up um, in a political forum at all levels of government yeah, that 
they're talking about education and like funding education, but also like just the nature of education that like people want to go back. Yeah. You never hear people saying they want to go back in education. It's like <clears throat> that is like the scariest thing. Yeah. Like, like, like no, you don't ever hear people calling to go back in medicine. They're like, let's get like the eighteen hundreds <laughs> medicine. <clears throat> no one is like, let's let's deal with cancer like they did in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. Like, no, they everyone wants pushing the envelope what's coming in the future yeah. and it's like with medicine or like even law or like everything they want constantly be evolving and and checking it out and finding is this honoring the most amount of people but education people feel free to shout from like the loudest mountaintop that they want it like it was in the 1950s yeah. <laughs> like, like that that's somehow somehow copying textbooks yeah. and like beating children like with the times tables is like a way forward yeah. and like <clears throat> there's something and like people just don't want to i don't think people readily accept like how bad the nature of education is like like i was talking <clears throat> to young people and like they're like oh i'm so glad to be finished high school and i was just like oh, okay you've piqued my interest like what 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 are what was so bad about high school yeah and i mean there's a lot of bad in high school for a lot of people yeah but i just was interested and they're saying that like the level of bullying on just a regular occurrence on a school bus yeah is through the roof like it's off the charts and they feel felt there was no support and because i was saying like being naive i immediately was like did you go to the administration and the staff yeah and <clears throat> the individuals were like oh no you get in more trouble because if you were to get proof or something like you were if you were to film people bullying like that's like uh like against their rights or something and you're being told like it was a very a, a very interesting thing that that they just felt generally really unsupported that there was no one listening and and I I would hazard to guess that it's not an anomaly yeah but like no one is really like you see like oh bullying is a problem bullying is a problem and all this and like you yeah. see billboards but what are what what is the educational system really doing yeah like having someone dress up as a bear and being like hey everyone <laughs> don't don't post naked pictures of other people in your high school like don't do that <laughs> like <laughs> like if people are like oh this 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 wonderful drama by adults yeah has really showed me the light <laughs> like i don't think there's a lot of people who are like moved into the light by being talked down to yeah or seeing a, a, a sign in a in a bus, yeah. like, or a bus shelter, or a billboard downtown, I, I, that's not actually doing anything. And, and there's research coming out that that stuff doesn't actually do anything. Yeah, like from the big university studying, it. and it's like, and that goes for substance abuse, that goes for bullying, uh, vandalism, crime, yeah. youth crime, and these things that they're not actually so they they are now finding research that they know these things don't work but they still do them um, but it's because it's so it's them. optics it's yeah. optics it's it optics. gives the adults the illusion that it's working. yeah I can, I, can, <laughs> I can drive home at night and you're and, and feel like, comfortable at least we're doing that against bullying <laughs> no one's gonna do fentanyl because we got a guy who looks really really sick on a billboard and you assume <laughs> that you look like that if you do fentanyl and you might die yeah. like so that's gonna just scare people out of it or, or, or like fentanyl, like yeah. and like no one is looking at billboards and thinking like let's not do beer at a party those billboards are working on the people who already aren't going to be doing fentanyl you know what i mean like yeah. the people who are at like at risk of doing fentanyl or drugs or being like they're not looking at those billboards and being like, well, I don't want to look like that. They're like, I don't give a fuck, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and it's just completely ineffective. And But once again, the government has no problem, like, uh, completely blank checking those things. Like, they don't, those yeah. programs are funded very well. And, like, it's very expensive to have billboards and whatnot. And so, or even just anti smoking. Like, yeah, anti smoking. Anti smoking. Like what? You get all this money from smokes and then you put anti-smoking it's like what <laughs> yeah like it just it like and so 
I'm saying as like with major minor, like I'm just want to be like take like get out of entrenched thinking and say, hey, we can if we take uh, some of that. Like, you can keep in your, like, ineffective, entrenched thinking if it makes you sleep better at night that to know that you're not doing anything for to help people. But, like, at least have, uh, allocate some money to try out of the box, which are going back to, like, what, like, politicians and what, is that actually do things that uh, haven't been the norm. Yeah. Like, do things that haven't been the norm and do things that might fail. Like that's what truly would be out of the box, right, like, and just allowing it. Because maybe you pro you you fund a, a dozen programs, and you only get one. But if you get one that is actually effective, that's better than continuously for decade after decade doing something that's not effective. Just throwing money at the same thing that you already know isn't working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it makes you feel better. Yeah, or yeah. Like, you're like, well, everyone can see how we feel. It's like. Oh well, what's the government doing? Oh well, there's I I saw a thing that says don't smoke. So obviously the, the government doesn't smoke want us to it. smoke. Yeah. But like, <laughs> no one who's smoking is ever like, oh, all these signs, you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. And like again, most most kids who are doing stuff like that, they do it because they're bored or they feel disconnected. They're not like part of a community, you know. Yeah. Like, you put people on sports teams, or you put them in bands, or you put them in after-school programs, or you just give them a community yeah. where they can, like, see how their actions affect this community, and they can operate in, like, it's like a mini, like, society test, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's just like, like, someone, a, uh, a doctor actually was told me, and I was like, oh, that's very interesting from a doctor. A doctor uh, said to me, like, like school inherently is like really tough because you take like a whole bunch of four and five year olds and you just stick them in this like pressure cooker of an environment because like they don't know any of the other most likely don't know any of the other four and five year olds yeah they're emotionally really not equipped for much like no. when you're four and five you're not emotionally equipped for anything no but we stick them in this pressure cooker situation where they have to spend like four to five days a week eight hours a day uh, with the same people that they don't know yeah. at all with someone presiding over them like in a power figure that they don't know who's yeah. trying to get them to do things that they don't necessarily understand why or want to do like try to do that with 20 stra strangers who are adults yeah but like that's basically then peel away the emotional ability to understand the situation yeah. going on but I feel like what they're doing there is they're training you for you're nine to five you know yeah because that's what a job you just described a job you know yeah. there's somebody in power who's trying to get you to do things that you don't necessarily want to do with yeah. a bunch of people who are strangers to you but you see four to five times a week you know yeah. like, and then so like, you're gonna get bad results and that's why i think like where bullying comes from yeah because it's just like there's not and and the attention should be like heavily directed towards like developing social bonds and emotional connection and emotional intelligence and people so you and if you do that at an early age i think um the, as children age then you don't hear these horrific stories where it's just like bullying is so prevalent in high schools yeah and like bullying has like reached a whole new level too like yeah uh, like bullying is something you're not that, safe at home anymore exactly bullying is something i wouldn't even understand anymore because i didn't have to deal with that like yeah the worst i had to deal with is maybe somebody on like msn or something like that you know yeah like but it's not like social media it's not facebook it's not videos of me it's not pictures of me yeah you know? like, like, I, I, the, the vicious the level of viciousness would would be and can be and i think is uh, off the charts. Yeah. So yeah, no, but but I think I I really believe that if you have that in um, early the emotional thing in like kindergarten, kindergarten and in grade one and all those younger grades, yeah, to just be like focusing on like that people should celebrate and get away from the consensus hating because I think like going back to that consensus hating that 
that's where it starts coming. Oh yeah, that's where, like, where you're taught where, it. Like, you're <laughs> taught, like, one guy is like, this guy's playing blocks, and like, like I don't like this guy, and this guy gets another we'll go a girl and gets together with another one and says, let's hate that guy, and like, yeah. and then it just it just snowballs, and yeah. like, and then you get groups of kids who are alienating other kids right from the get go, and like, if you don't, if teachers are like just worried about like academic curriculum uh, or focused on it even, like I that's what I'm saying, like pivot the focus away. Well, especially for a young age like that, because that's when you're most impressionable, right? Yeah. And like, I mean, people, I think that's just people's natural instinct, too, to, like, group up and, like, find, you know, because they don't want to be the odd person out. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, evolutionarily, if you're the odd person out, you're going to get, like, left behind. Like, you need to, like, fit in with this group. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. No. So. But. Hopefully, hopefully, like, we can we can get people to do something. And that's the heart of what we're trying to do with the project is just provide a space. Like maybe, maybe like if the mainstream schooling doesn't, that there is a place that is promoting that, promoting that pro-social positive connection and, and away from that and emotional intelligence and like people being like, like take you where you are and, and promote that and, so people have a, a a place or have something that can ground them. That even if it is, if they're in a hostile environment or something, that they're like, oh, but I have this environment and this is this is positive and I'm I'm treated as I should be, and then they can recognize. Because a lot of times, I think a lot of times come from that people don't have a basis. So if they're just in a hostile environment. They, 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 I think the real damage is if they start to believe that that hostile environment is the, it, like the norm. Is norm. Yeah, yeah. And they accept it or internalize that. Yeah. And I think that's where the real damage comes. And then people, like, that's when, like, I think, like, things of suicide, because then you feel like it's inescapable. Yeah. Like, like, that's just what life is. That's, and life is shit. Yeah. Like, like, life is shit. Like, oh my God. People are brutal people are just constantly bullying you and throwing things on you and saying your shit and like that seems to be the norm context that's my uh, and they don't have something and so providing hopefully I mean that's just what we're hoping to do is just providing some alternative of that yeah I don't know. like just providing a community a community that cares that isn't shit you know what I mean like <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just needs that. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, it's like at the heart of it is that, like, and, like, some people might be like, oh, well, you can't always be, like, I read something that was, like, uh, like, criticism that was, like, if you were, if you just say everything is positive or everything is, like, great, you're, like, taking away from true greatness like like if like if every band is good if you just say every band is good and help every band mm -hmm. then like you're like raising up mediocrity or like lessening greatness but I, I i think for like community building and for like an all ages venue yeah. the best thing we can do is build people up yeah and the like, best thing you'd be like, and if, if that is a life. criticism if a criticism is that you're too positive or you're trying to give people confidence and like it's like to try and 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 do something and i don't i don't necessarily like where like mediocrity like i don't care what anyone says like nirvana bleach uh like until butch big came along and found out like like if they released uh, kirk came would probably still alive but like Bleach stuff is not as good as later stuff Kurt Cobain wrote. Yeah. It just is not. Yeah. It's just not. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. People can be like, consensus hate me for saying that because like <laughs> people believe that Bleach was their best thing, but everything after Bleach was better. Yeah. It just was. <laughs> it just was. Everything after Bleach was better. Like every single album after Bleach was better than Bleach. Yeah. And like it just that just because he. He developed, and he got better, and he got more people to work with, uh, and people helped him develop his talent, and and you could and that was people raising him up, and it created a 
terrible negative va- vacuum for him. But like, like you need people to raise up and collaborate and say that there's talent there and, and yeah. build you up. Like, well, definitely. And all right, like life in general is constantly just trying to like tear you down so you need somewhere like an island and just like you know like like because life is hard so like anywhere (laughs) you can find like places that are like oh this isn't so hard or sweet like this is a great group of people like hold on to those places like foster (laughs) those places and like yeah it's weird because it's like weird people like are like don't like don't like criticism and nature of criticism is like you people are like oh you know you got to be honest with people it's like if it's shit it's shit or like whatever but like um but then it's weird that the same people who are like are very like wanting things to be very critical and don't want too much positivity don't give everyone positive reviews or like there is difference but like at the same time the same people also if something is very bad it's also celebrated yeah like the like the cult of Ed Wood or that movie The Room that James Franco yeah. is now doing, like, and like and it's like a weird thing where like like they're so it's so bad it's good, but like if though if people artists didn't they weren't feel empowered or they didn't or like it's something about that they're like those people are they're just like people higher up are like laughing at those people like actually just laughing at them because they're not aware of like social cues or whatever but it's a it's an interesting it's a very interesting sort of dynamic that that draws to criticism yeah because what what does that mean like if it's if you're mediocre or someone judges it to be mediocre whatever that judgment may be and like it's getting into like like how music or arts are even judged in the first place yeah. like and who is judging it because only one person can only judge from one context yeah it's but, almost it's like almost worse to be just in the middle in the mediocre middle because if you are really bad you're going to get attention yeah if you are really good you're going to get attention yeah <laughs> like <laughs> and if you're just sort of in there like and you well, lots of people will pass you by and i think there's a lot of people like in the middle yeah. that if they had support and people helping and collaborating that you're going to find greatness in there yeah definitely that that you're going to find there's going to be something and if there isn't so what yeah so what you're helping people try try to be try to develop something that they believe in yeah and like you know and i don't think there's something inherently negative about that i think it's only positive about that if you try to bring the best out of people and maybe they don't but like like not providing that uh avenue is i I think problematic yeah oh no definitely and like i said like like yes you do need the negative aspects of life with the good to or to appreciate the good aspects of life it's obviously all about like a fine balance and stuff like if you are just told that you're awesome your entire life you're obviously going to be like an egomaniac who doesn't have like a grip on reality and stuff like that so it's it's honestly walking that balance but there's never it's never a bad thing to build people up and like help people out um not only for them but for yourself (laughs) like (laughs) yeah 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 so anyways yeah that's kind of great conversation man I, i i always enjoy coming and talking to you If you liked this episode of the podcast, why not leave a review? You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. For up-to-date information on the podcast, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can find us at Froggy Style Productions. That's Frog, the letter E, Style Productions. For more ways to support the show, visit fsproductions.ca.